What is this? Seesaw. Seesaw, absolutely. Now, in a seesaw, this, this thing right here, this piece in the center, important word, by the way, is called the fulcrum. Good job. Science teacher. And this is the lever. I forgot it. Now, how does this apply to happiness? How does this apply to you changing the story or changing the outcome of an event? Uh, here's what Archimedes has to say. Archimedes, the great scientist and mathematician of ancient Greece, famously posited. Now, if you're anything like I am, when I saw that word, first of all, I went into Google and I'm like, okay, what is the meaning of this word? How do you even pronounce it? It's P O S I T E D D I. <laughs> P O S I T E D. Posited. It is to make a statement of fact. All right. Now, Archimedes famously posited give me a lever long enough and a fulcrum on which to place it, and I shall move the world. 2,200 years later, as I sat in my fresh freshman dormitory, now this is the author of Happiness Advantage, uh, Sean Aker talking, and he says, 22 years later, as I sat in a freshman dormitory watching students prepare for an exam, I had my own eureka moment. Our brains, too, operate according to the Archimedean formula. All right, guys, hang in there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to connect the dots for you. Take, for example, a seesaw. On a seesaw, the fulcrum is set at the exact center of the two seats. If two boys, each weighing 100 pounds, sit on the same, sit the same distance from the fulcrum on opposing seesaw seats, they will balance each other. Now, imagine two boys weighing 100 pounds and the other 150 pounds in the same situation. The smaller boy is going to hang in the air until the larger one either pushes off with his feet from the ground or, as boys sometimes do, gets off the seat and sends the other one hurling to the ground. I'm sure girls do that as well. But what? if we move the fulcrum, okay? We've got 100 pound boy, other way around, John. Oh, we'll just do this. Yeah, we've got 100 pound boy and we have boy weighing 150 pounds. A little big to be on a seesaw, but whatever, let's go with it. If we move the fulcrum in the direction of the heavier child, what happens? The lighter one is able to balance out with the heavier one. 100% fact. Move the fulcrum. Take notes. That's a note. The closer we move the center point, the fulcrum towards the heavier boy, the easier he is to lift. <laughs> If we keep moving the fulcrum in that direction, eventually the lighter boy will effectively weigh more than the big bone buddy. <laughs> Move the fulcrum close enough to the heavier boy and the lighter boy can climb off the seat and with a single finger, use the seesaw lever to move his heavier friend. In other words, by shifting this point, by shifting the fulcrum, by shifting this point around which energy is applied, we can effectively turn the seesaw from a balancing scale into a powerful lever. That was exactly Archimedes' point. If we have a long enough lever and a good place to stand a fulcrum, point, we can move the entire world. What I realize is that our brains work precisely the same way. If you, in your notes, I want you to write down fulcrum, this 
thing right here, the center point. I want you to write your fulcrum is your mindset with which we generate power to change. Our fulcrum is our mindset with which we generate power to change. And I want you to write down the lever is the potential power and possibility that lives within you. It is the potential power and possibility that lives within you. Now, geez, how many times can I kick that chair? Our power to maximize our potential is based on two important things. The length of the lever. How big is your power? The length of the lever. Our power to maximize our potential is based on two important things. Number one, the length of our lever. How much potential power and possibility we believe we have. And number two, the position of our fulcrum. The mindset which with, with <laughs> the mindset with which we generate the power to change. Number two, the power of our fulcrum, the mindset with which we generate the power to change. Okay, now listen up. While we can't change reality through sheer force alone. While we cannot change reality through sheer force alone, we can use our brain to change how we process the world. And that in turn changes how we react to it. We can use our brain to change how we process the world and that in turn changes how we react to it. Happiness is not about lying to ourselves or turning a blind eye to the negative, but about adjusting our brain so that we see the ways to rise above our circumstances. That's deep. So I'm <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. This is a deep. Happiness is not about lying to ourselves or turning a blind eye to the negative. The negative is the negative. It exists. I'm not going to pretend. Pretending it's not there does not change anything. If this boy that weighs 100 pounds pretends that this boy that weighs 150 pounds doesn't weigh 150 pounds, if he ignores reality, is the seesaw going to balance? Say no. It's those are the facts. You guys with me? By adjusting our brain, our mindset, by adjusting the fulcrum, by moving it closer to the heavier boy, by adjusting our mindset, we see the ways to rise above our circumstances. Now, on Friday, I shared my story from his life, a lottery ticket, and I shared some pretty personal stuff. And if I use that story in this lesson, I would say that my fulcrum at the age of 17, my mindset was a fixed Mindset. I believed that this was never going to change. I believed this is my life. My life sucks. Therefore, I don't want to live. True story. You were here, you heard it. Okay. And by changing my mindset, by moving the fulcrum, I was able to change the way I look at things. And what was not possible, living a life of happiness and prosperity and gratitude and joy became reality. 
Not because circumstances changed, because they didn't. My parents were still my parents. I still lived in the same 800 square foot house with five people, two bedrooms, one bath, no air conditioning, no food to eat. Life was life. Parents who didn't want me there, who neglected, mentally abused, physically abused, life was still life. And because I didn't know that I could change my mindset, and I didn't know the power of the lever, my only other choice was I'm done. I'm checking out. Now, 42 years later, life is still life. I still deal with challenges just like you. The only difference is today I'm able to change the way I look at things, to move the fulcrum, to be able to get off of that seesaw and with one finger turn adversity into greatness. With one finger, I no longer see problems, I see solutions. I no longer see roadblocks and dead ends, I see opportunity. Now, did life change? Say no. What changed was inside of here. Change the way you look at things. Things you look at change. By the way, if I'm chasing a better life, thinking once I get here, I'll be happy. Well, here is always moving, which means I'm never happy. Happiness is not the result of reaching a destination. Happiness is the vehicle that takes you to that destination. By the way, happiness is a choice. Go visit a third world country and visit children who live without the things that you think are <sighs> entitled. I'm entitled to live in a nice house. I'm entitled to have money, to have food to eat. I'm entitled to be able to turn on the water spigot and water comes out. And they live with all, without all of these things. And yet they can be the happiest people on earth. What do you think they did? They moved <coughs> the fulcrum. Okay, talk to me. Diane. So I just sort of, um, you know, listening and processing, I think that being happy, um, I, think I know that being happy is definitely a mindset. And it goes back to exactly what you're saying, what you focus on expands. And so I know that when I'm all over the place and I'm all over the place, usually about 90% of the time. True story. <laughs> I do end up at the end of the day, like uh, James Shaw that we were talking about it this morning. I do end up, I, I end up at, at the end of the day, like what have I accomplished? And then I'm unhappy because I didn't accomplish what I first woke up in the morning to say I was going to accomplish. And that's even with my time blocking and everything, I still get very distracted. So, but when I do accomplish what I want to accomplish, I am a much at peace person by the end of the day. And so if you couple that with your days into weeks into months, it's almost like you put that all together and that gives you the general happiness that like that balance, which is the fulcrum, fulcrum. fulcrum that 
we all, I, I, I might fall from all over the place. So it's, <laughs> it's great. That's a great. How do you change it? How do you change it? What if you started out happy rather than being happy at the end of the day when you achieved your goals? What if you were happy on the journey? Could you change it? Yes. You could. Would you achieve more? Definitely. Yeah, you would. I've got two hands up on Zoom, and then I'm coming to you, Clarissa. Shirley's been waiting patiently. Denise, you're after Clarissa. All right, Shirley, talk to us. Uh, a couple of thoughts. So I read uh, this book, The Energy Bus, mm -hmm. and it is amazing. So when you think of the fulcrum as being my mindset, like I get to choose, I get to create what I want to create. And then I also thought of the scripture where it talks about... Um, Keep going. I know you're going. <laughs> Watching. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. And the latter part of that, it says, according to the power um, that worketh in us, the faith that I have, it's mine. It's not based on you or anyone else. What do I believe? Mm. Those were the two thoughts that I had. You're the best. 100% agree with you. Thank you, Shirley. Kina, you're up. Hi, good morning. Um, John, I was listening to you, and uh, before living in the States, I was living in a third world country where you have kids that not even higher than your car knocking on the side for money, but they were always smiling. And I realized that these kids appreciated every moment from the time that they woke up, from the mango tree they could climb and grab a mango, and I don't think they were going to be going to school, but it seemed that they lived so presently, almost how animals live, not comparing humans to animals, but how dogs just live today and animals live today. And, and I think that was the key for them. They didn't think gift. about where their next meal was. Yeah. They what a just, gift. yeah. What a gift. Yeah. Powerful. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Clarissa, I think you're up. Okay, so Shirley made a great point. And um, once you realize that the power that you speak of is within, then it's totally under your power to control it. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to what you said to Diane. What if you are happy at the beginning to take you and have that happiness accompany you through your journey, then when you still don't finish everything on that list, you're still happy because the journey was good. But um, I was, my comment was, it's going back to that seesaw and that life really is, has no balance. I mean, I think Gary was just so accurate when he said, we, we don't have balance. I don't care what you try and do, you can't get it all done. And that was the topic of, they talked about that on James Shaw today. But that seesaw, if you've ever been on a seesaw, what do you do? You try and counterbalance the other person on the other side as much as possible. Well, yeah, you do that through actions, right? You, you, yeah. move, you move, you move your, your yeah. Yeah, in, in reality, all you have to do is change the fulcrum, move your mindset. Move it just a little bit. Denise. Um, I had a conversation with my mom just last week, this weekend, and she said of all the, she, all of her children, I was like that happiest. Hmm. I'm like, mom, she's like, well, how do you do that? I said, well, mom, not to put you down, but you and dad are very pessimistic. Hmm. And when I was born, when I got to be a, an adult, I had to figure out how not to be. I, I got that from you, pessimism and always seeing the bad thing and looking at the bad, being the devil's advocate all the time. I said, I can't do that anymore. And so I changed, I, I, I decided that I was going to be happy no matter what. And there were some things I had to take out of my life. I, I love Aretha Franklin. Yes. I love her music. But her music is very down. She's always talking about 
not having a man or man's cheating on her. All that <laughs> thing. Everything was bad. I, I loved it. But I, I said, I can't listen to Aretha anymore. <laughs> and another thing was uh, I had to, you know those those little games where you have the pictures and, and you have to figure out which is the difference? Mm -hmm. what, what, I have to get rid of that because I'm looking for the differences. I can't I can't look at the differences. Mm -hmm. I have to be more positive on that. I have to see the whole picture and not think about all the things that are, that are different. I have to think about the things that that are more the same. Yeah, and I my love mom, that. And guess what? My mom got mad at me because <laughs> she said you can't do it like that. I love those those games. It's like you love those games, but don't love them. I don't do it anymore. You know, it's just weird. You know, interesting. Uh, quick question for you, and I'm and I, uh, and I hope this goes the way I think it's going to go. Did it feel like conflict for you? For your mom, yes, yeah. she didn't like what you were saying. However, how did you feel? You were fine. Here's why. There's seven levels of energy from thought to action to results. And everything starts with thought. And the lowest levels of thought are victim and anger. And the highest level of thought is non-judgment. You don't see things as good or bad. You just see things as things. And your mom's operating, she's communicating with you at a level one, level two, conscious state of thinking. And you're at level six, level seven, and how you think. And you can't have conflict with someone who's not at the same level of energy that you are. It takes two people at the same level to have conflict. I didn't know how, I didn't know that was why that happened. Read energy leadership. Okay. Did you guys get a good value today? Are there any more hands up on Zoom? No. Did you get value today? Yes. Did I make you think? Yeah. You know, Gary Keller said many years ago when he was talking to us at a at a mastermind and, and he was creating this company. He said, we're going to teach our people how to think differently and how they think will become their number one competitive advantage. My goal every day in this Survive to Thrive call, we've got 20, 24 people in the room and 20 people on Zoom. You realize that's a daily team meeting with more than 40 people, guys. That's pretty amazing right? Scott's in the room. Scott's one of my favorite people and a good friend. And Scott is a MAPS coach. He coaches team leaders and OPs. How many coaching clients do you have, Scott? Uh, 34. 34. So I'm not recording, but I am live on Facebook, so I don't want to put you in a bad spot. And... Do you have market centers that have... We all do, by the way. The answer to this question is everybody does at times, including us guys. Do you have market centers that have a challenge with getting people to attend? He's, yeah, there's, there's the answer. Okay. That was not about me. It's about you. I'm sorry, to attend these? These meetings? Weekly team meetings? Yeah. yeah. And, and that's not about, no, no, no. I don't want you to hear because this is not ego. This is not me saying, look how many Facebook followers I have. I'm the most amazing ever. <laughs> That's what it is. This is about you, about this group. And I couldn't be more proud of you. Okay, I'm going to close with this. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says to become a new creation by the renewing of your mind. That 17-year-old boy who didn't want to live 42 years ago became a new creation by the renewing of my heart, soul, and mind.